Summary of Madness, Race and Insanity in a Jim Crow Asylum, written by Antonia Hilton. Introduction. Title, Madness, Navigating the Labyrinth of Mental Health and Historical Injustices. In the heart of New England, amidst the changing seasons and the echoes of childhood laughter, a park stands as a witness to the transformative journey of a family. The narrator, reflecting on the cherished memories of carefree days spent with siblings and cousins in this park, juxtaposes the innocence of the past with the harsh realities of the present, a journey marked by the tumultuous waves of mental illness and the arduous quest for understanding and support. The park, once a symbol of joy and familial bonds, becomes a meeting ground for the narrator and their loved one, who grapples with the weight of a mental health crisis. The poignant narrative unfolds against the backdrop of winter in 2021, a season that mirrors the emotional chill and isolation faced by the family. Desperation permeates the air as the narrator, their loved one, and their family navigate a mental health care system fraught with challenges and systemic shortcomings. The loved one's mental health struggles manifest as paranoid delusions, fearful visions of being hunted by white supremacists. The once familiar park transforms into a space of vulnerability and negotiation, a place where the narrator grapples with the daunting task of bridging the gap between the reality they perceive and the support they desperately need. The family's journey unfolds as a series of heart-wrenching encounters with a mental health care system ill-equipped to address the unique challenges faced by people of color. The scarcity of black psychiatrists in Massachusetts becomes a stark reality, leaving the family without a trusted professional who understands their cultural nuances and experiences. Faced with the prospect of a months-long waiting list for an interview, the family confronts a system that seems indifferent to the urgency of their loved one's condition. The narrator, driven by a sense of desperation and love, recounts a moment of interaction with a police officer, an attempt to convey the goodness and worthiness of their loved one, beseeching the officer to convey a message of restraint to their colleagues. This act, fueled by a desire to protect, underscores the intersection of mental health crises and the systemic issues ingrained within law enforcement. Yet, alongside the desperation, a seed of shame takes root within the narrator, a shame born from the realization that they, too, wish for an institution where their loved one could find healing without the looming threat of violence. This internal conflict mirrors a broader societal dilemma, exposing the inadequacies of a mental health care system that falls short in providing a guarantee of safety and compassionate care. The loved one's struggle with paranoia and the conviction of being pursued by a nefarious organization unfolds against the backdrop of societal events reports of extremist and white supremacist groups gaining momentum, participating in riots, and meeting with political figures. The pervasive specter of racial violence hovers over the family, amplifying the challenges of convincing their loved one that the danger they perceive may not be imminent. The heart-wrenching realization dawns on the narrator that their loved one believes they have failed them, a crushing blow that resonates in the park, now burdened with the weight of shattered hope and unspoken despair. The inability to bridge the gap between reality and perception becomes a source of profound grief, further exacerbated by societal forces that manipulate fears and exacerbate mental health struggles. As the narrative delves into the broader landscape of mental health care in the United States, the narrator brings attention to the alarming statistics and growing concerns raised by social workers, family physicians, and teachers. Mental illness, depression, suicidal ideation, and drug overdoses are on the rise, yet the accessibility and affordability of mental health services remain elusive, particularly for marginalized communities. The National Alliance on Mental Illness reveals staggering figures, approximately one in five adults and one in six children experiencing mental illness in a given year. The inadequacies of mental health services, compounded by the fact that many services and therapists are not covered by Medicaid and public insurance paint a bleak picture of a system that fails those who need it most. The narrative weaves through the experiences of minority youth, with psychiatrists warning of an alarming rise in the suicide rate among this demographic. Dr. Tammy Benton, a black pediatric psychiatrist, sheds light on the unique challenges faced by black children, stress, uncertainty, racial discrimination, and barriers in finding culturally competent providers. The loved one's experiences echo these patterns of condescension and disrespect encountered within emergency rooms and state-of-the-art facilities. The plea for empathy, understanding, 
and a human connection goes unanswered, leaving them feeling discarded and lost within a system that should be offering solace. The narrator's family stories, spanning from regular depression and anxiety to alcoholism and schizophrenia, highlight the historical silence surrounding mental health within black families. The lack of tools and language to discuss these issues in their formative years contributes to a pervasive societal ignorance about mental health within communities of color. The narrator's academic journey at Harvard University becomes a pivotal chapter in their exploration of mental health. Delving into the history of psychiatry, they grapple with the absence of narratives that depict the experiences of black individuals within the mental health care system. The discovery of Crownsville, formerly Maryland's Hospital for the Negro Insane, becomes a turning point, a historical institution where the intersection of mental health, racism, and institutional neglect is laid bare. Crownsville, a segregated asylum that once housed thousands of black patients, emerges as a symbol of cultural shifts in American history. Through meticulous research, the narrator unearths a rich tapestry of archival documents, patient testimony, photographs, newspaper articles, government reports, and oral history that paints a vivid picture of a forgotten chapter in mental health care. The hospital, standing at the intersection of emancipation, desegregation, deinstitutionalization, and the rise of mass incarceration, becomes a lens through which the narrator examines the ongoing struggles faced by black communities in accessing healthcare. The survival of Crownsville's records stands as a testament to the resilience of those who were overlooked and mistreated, allowing the narrator to correct the misunderstood historical narrative. As a journalist, the narrator grapples with the responsibility of shaping the first draft of history. Through their storytelling, they seek to challenge existing narratives, complicate incomplete histories, and foster a deeper understanding of the broken mental health care system. The YSH is that their work will contribute to a broader conversation about the intertwined nature of mental health, racial injustice, and systemic failures. The narrative unfolds as a call to action, a plea for society to confront the uncomfortable truths embedded within America's troubled mental health care systems. It highlights the urgent need for empathy, understanding, and systemic change to address the long-standing challenges faced by marginalized communities. In the concluding passages, the narrator reflects on the limitations of their own power to fix things for their loved one. However, they express hope that their storytelling can offer something transformative, whether it be a greater understanding of the complexities of mental illness, an appreciation for shared history, or the courage to confront societal injustices head-on. As the narrative comes full circle, the park, once a symbol of carefree joy, takes on a new significance. It becomes a place where resilience, love, and the enduring spirit of humanity persist, despite the hardships faced by the narrator and their loved one. The journey through the labyrinth of mental health and historical injustices concludes with a call for collective compassion and a commitment to rewrite the narrative for future generations. Chapter 1 In the intricate tapestry of American history, there are threads that tell stories of triumph and progress, while others bear witness to the harrowing experiences of individuals caught in the web of oppression. The life of William H. Murray, a man of talent and ambition, serves as a poignant reminder of the intersecting forces of personal struggle and racial injustice that defined early 20th century America. Born in 1872, a mere shadow of a decade after the abolition of chattel slavery, Murray's journey unfolded against a backdrop of societal upheaval and institutionalized racism. As he navigated the treacherous waters of his time, Murray grappled with inner demons that would ultimately unravel the fabric of his life, leaving behind a legacy marked by tragedy and resilience. Early Life and Promise William H. Murray was born into a world still grappling with the aftermath of slavery's abolition, a world where the promise of freedom clashed with the harsh realities of racial prejudice. Despite the odds stacked against him, Murray exhibited an early aptitude for learning and music, demonstrating a keen intellect and a prodigious talent for the piano. His formative years were shaped by the twin influences of education and music, as he honed his skills at Howard University and emerged as a respected educator and pianist within his community. Murray's accomplishments marked him as a beacon of hope for black Americans striving to carve out a place for themselves in a society rife with inequality and injustice. The Descent into Darkness the seeds of Murray's descent into darkness were sown with his battle against typhoid fever, 
a relentless adversary that left him physically weakened and emotionally scarred. The fever, known colloquially as brain fever, wrought havoc on Murray's psyche, transforming him from a vibrant, quick-witted individual into a shadow of his former self. Despite his diagnosis, Murray stubbornly refused to heed the call for rest, driven by an unyielding determination to defy the limitations imposed upon him by his illness. As Murray's behavior grew increasingly erratic, his family bore witness to the unraveling of a once-stable household. His violent mood swings and bouts of depression cast a pall over their lives, forcing them to confront the harsh reality of his mental deterioration. The Admission to Crownsville in 1917, amidst the throes of his personal turmoil, William H. Murray found himself admitted to Crownsville Hospital, a segregated institution that served as a grim testament to the enduring legacy of racial oppression. Justifying the conditions of Murray's confinement as necessary, white politicians and doctors perpetuated the myth that newfound freedom had precipitated a rise in insanity among black people. Crownsville, with its overcrowded wards and harsh treatment regimens, epitomized the dehumanizing reality faced by those deemed unfit to navigate the complexities of a society built upon the bedrock of white supremacy. For Murray, Crownsville represented a descent into oblivion, a stark departure from the life he had once known. Gone were the days of scholarly pursuits and familial bliss, replaced by the cold embrace of institutional confinement. Life within Crownsville the conditions within Crownsville were a damning indictment of a society rife with inequality and injustice. Photographs captured the stark reality of life within its walls, where men and women clad in tattered garments shuffled through dimly lit corridors, their faces etched with resignation. The absence of basic necessities such as shoes and adequate clothing served as a stark reminder of the systemic neglect that pervaded every facet of their existence. Long stretches of time passed with no eye contact or conversation from the attendants, and patients were subjected to harsh treatments and punitive measures that stripped them of their dignity and humanity. The Legacy of Tragedy Yet, amidst the despair that engulfed Crownsville, Murray's legacy endured through the indomitable spirit of his daughter, Polly Murray. A celebrated legal scholar and civil rights activist, Polly Murray's life bore witness to the enduring legacy of her father's struggle against the forces of oppression. Reflecting on his relentless pursuit of excellence in the face of insurmountable odds, Polly Murray's own journey echoed the resilience of her father's spirit. The tragedy of William H. Murray's life serves as a poignant reminder of the intersectionality of personal turmoil and societal injustice. His descent into madness mirrored the broader upheavals of a nation grappling with the legacies of slavery and segregation. Yet, amidst the darkness that shrouded his existence, Murray's legacy endures as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Conclusion In the annals of history, the name William H. Murray stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of personal struggle and resilience in the face of adversity. His life, marked by tragedy and turmoil, serves as a poignant reminder of the intersecting forces of racial injustice and societal upheaval that defined early 20th century America. Yet, amidst the darkness that threatened to consume him, Murray's legacy endures as a beacon of hope for future generations, a reminder that even in the bleakest of times, the human spirit is capable of triumphing over adversity. As we reflect on the life of William H. Murray, let us not only mourn the tragedy of his fate but also celebrate the resilience and determination that defined his legacy.